One could still argue, of course, that these sex differences happen because of some very early form of sexist parenting. But then how do you explain behavior differences in newborns? So when they look at babies in the first 72 hours of life, they find that males and females are not identical in the way they behave. Males startle more than females. If you give a little a puff of air on the abdomen, they, they startle much bigger and much more likely to startle than females. And females rhythmically mouth. They suck on their tongues. They move their lips and so forth more than males do. So could it be that when we treat kids differently, cuddle the girls, toss the boys into the air, that we're not just being sexist? Maybe we're responding to inborn cues from the kids. Of course, if boys and girls are different because of biology, wouldn't the differences show up in research on the brain? Well, recently, researchers have found differences in men's and women's brains. This is frozen brain tissue that Dr. Laura Allen's been studying at UCLA. As I began to look at the human brain more and more, I kept finding differences. And about uh, seven or eight out of 10 structures that we actually measured turned out to be different between men and women. These differences, says Dr. Allen, are most likely due to sex hormones we're exposed to in the womb. Testosterone kind of rides a roller coaster until birth. We know the first rise of testosterone causes the development of the male sex organs. We don't know what the second rise of testosterone does. I suspect it causes our brains to be different. I just want you to keep your eyes closed. And with the help of this scanner, which records brain activity, scientists now also know that men and women use different parts of their brains when thinking about the same things. Do you plug the numbers in for the variables? All these differences could explain why women have better verbal skills. While some studies show men excel at math. Negative two. Evolution suggests theories as to why our brains are different. For four million years, men and women did very different things, says anthropologist Helen Fisher. Women did all the gathering, and so they were collecting tiny seeds and tiny berries. This may explain why today women have better fine motor skills. <laughs> and why boys do so well on video games. Evolution led males to excel at mentally seeing things in three dimensions. We see a great many more men um, who are architects, who are engineers, who are chess players. And more than likely, men choose those because they are, on average, more skilled at all kinds of spatial tasks. Men are better at throwing balls, throwing sticks, throwing stones. All of these spatial, quantitative uh, visual skills probably come from millions of years on the grasslands of Africa when men set out every morning to track and to surround and to fell their prey and then to sort of pick their way back home. Those that didn't do that died out. Those who did survived to become our ancestors. Evolution also suggests that women really may be better parents, better nurturers. Certainly, if you look at animals, you see, it's almost always the female who does all the nurturing of the young. Experts say it may be that human females are better equipped for that task, too. Taking care of young babies is something that maybe women are biologically somewhat more uh, designed for, in some small ways. Their sensitivity to small changes in stimuli. Women, she says, have better proximal senses like sensitivity to sound. A drip that drives a woman crazy is often hardly noticeable to a man. Reinisch says this sensitivity may explain why women are better at understanding a baby's needs and good at reading people's emotions. Just by a slight change in body posture or tone of voice, a woman will know that somebody is uncomfortable or they're angry. This probably comes from millions of years of looking at their small baby that didn't tell them what they wanted. And by visually just picking up all these nonverbal cues, uh, establishing what the baby needed. All this science suggests that men and women are just innately different. But it's not just our sexist culture at work, it's biology. Gloria Steinem doesn't believe it. In fact, she says this research shouldn't even be done. It's really the remnant of anti-American crazy thinking to do this kind of research. It's what's keeping us down, not what's helping us. So, and feminist lawyer Gloria Allred says we shouldn't even be doing this program about it. We take attacks from the media on our skills and our abilities and our talents and our dreams very seriously. This is not just entertainment. This is harmful and damaging to our daughters' lives and to our mothers' lives. And I'm very angry about it. 
Attitudes like that led colleagues to advise Dr. Allen, don't do this kind of research. I was told that it just really wasn't a good idea because it was politically provocative. Other scientists have given up the research. One was refused a grant and told, this work ought not to be done. But shouldn't we always try to learn about human nature? Those who do the research say it's important. We must study things that are not necessarily fashionable and try to educate people so that they don't misuse the information. Misuse the information. That could happen. But right now, maybe it's a lack of information that's led us in some wrong directions. Today, there are elaborate and expensive government policies based on the fiction that men and women are interchangeable, that we bring the exact same skills and aptitudes to the table. What happens when you try to force society to organize itself around a fiction? We'll look at that when we return. The Great Haircut Debate. Her styling and his. Why does she pay more? A gender gap that women are fighting. Should there be a law? More about men, women, and the sex difference coming up. With John Stossel. I can understand why some feminist leaders just don't want research about gender differences talked about. Not long ago, similar research was used to keep women out of colleges and to keep women out of all kinds of important jobs. Defending the country, for example. Yes, during World War II, the government did relax its rules to allow thousands of women into the military. But this documentary shows the condescension they faced. They did a tremendous job. They also made quite an improvement in our parades. Women underwent regular training, but in skirts. And they were rarely allowed to even try out for important combat jobs. Get out! Get out of here! Go blue! Go blue! Today, women train pretty much like the men. And they can participate in most, but not all, combat jobs. Is that understood? Sergeant! Yes, Sergeant! That's not enough, says Gloria Steinem, because women are just as capable of combat as men. Women are in combat positions every day in the street. I think what they don't want us to do is to learn how to use guns. <laughs> I think that, suppose every underpaid waitress and battered wife had two years of military training. It'd be very interesting. But many people argue that women are just not strong enough and violent enough for combat. The Presidential Commission debated the issue. One of the majority who concluded that women were not qualified was Cato Byrne of the Heritage Foundation. How can you say they're not qualified? Modern warfare today is pulling a trigger, pressing a button on a computer. Women can do that as well or better than men. The real physical demands of combat troops and units remain the same as they have been since warfare began. It's a very heavy business. Victory goes to the strongest and the swiftest. And women are not fast and strong? There's not one world-class sport where the best female athletes compete with the best male athletes. Tests do show that on average, men have twice as much upper body strength as women. So to allow the services to admit more women, the military relaxed the strength tests required. For example, men must now do 42 push-ups, women just 18. Gender norming, they call it. Yes, the, you, you can find some examples where strength and speed are important, but they are clearly a, a, a minority. Not within the military, it's not a minority. I mean, it's the whole reason for existence. The military isn't a unique institution. They're not making widgets. And women really can't quite carry that 85-pound pack all the way back on the force march. The guys pitch in and help. The women add things that the women do well. well they work together. It's a problem if one guy's got to now carry two packs. I'm not hearing a lot of these complaints from officers now. The military seems ready to try. The gender police are patrolling the corridors of the Pentagon. If you express your opinion, you're a hop, skip, and a jump from a sexual harasser. You're putting women down. You're opposed to women's rights. Lay the weapon down! Lay the weapon down! This is such a bizarre man, social man, experiment. Lives are so at risk, you don't get extra points in the battle for having fielded the fairest army. Now, it's kill or be killed. The killing business is for men. Combat is a manly pursuit, correct? Then what is firefighting? Is this a manly pursuit too? For years, firemen said it was, and until 20 years ago, they did not even allow women the chance to compete for these jobs. 
The fact that today many strong women fight fires and do well shows how unfair it was to have a blanket policy that excluded all women. But does equal opportunity mean we must also force departments to hire a certain number of women? Firefighters need to be strong. On the strength tests given applicants, women just don't do as well as men. That doesn't matter, said a judge in San Francisco. The department must do what the bureaucrats call a reach down. Instead of simply hiring applicants who do best on the qualification test, you reach down to women who score lower. People's attitudes have got to change about who a firefighter is. That, um, who is it? Who was that guy that in Towering Inferno? That Steve McQueen, gorgeous man, all right, but white, right? That Steve McQueen with his blue eyes is the only person who can haul you out of a building. It's not true. I, some training and some time and put aside my law books, could probably learn to haul you out of a building. And if I thought you were going to die, if I didn't, I think I'd do pretty well. The point is, people have to be given a chance. Well, men and women were given a chance to pass the fire department's tests, but women didn't do very well. The Los Angeles Fire Department secretly made this tape of women applicants struggling and training. The department wants firefighters to be able to climb over a wall. This requires upper body strength many women just don't have. Likewise, firefighters need to be able to use an ax to chop through a door. They train on logs. The men can split them, but the women often cannot. Some of the women who can don't want to work with these women. The equipment required to do our job is heavy. The average woman does not have the strength to do this job. Veteran firefighter Julie Wolf testified in favor of strict strength tests. The department says it made the tape to protect itself from lawsuits. And it's reasonable to expect such suits. Most every big city has been hit with discrimination suits. It's just the kind of case that feminist lawyer Gloria Allred likes to bring. This tape was done to ward off people like you, who are going to bankrupt the county with lawsuits claiming that women... Well, if there's discrimination against women, then they have options. I say doing nothing is no longer acceptable, that we should fight back. And I think that the women who do so deserve a medal rather than criticism. Some fire departments settled the lawsuits by making admission requirements easier. For example, getting rid of the mile and a half run or easing some of the strength tests. How is America better off if the real physical demands of a job have to be watered down to accommodate women? If I, as an all-suffering taxpayer, have to be evacuated from a building, I used to be carried by a male firefighter. I am now dragged by my ankles as my head hits every single stair going down three stories. I prefer being carried. I assume most taxpayers prefer being carried. It's better to drag them out because there's less smoke down there. I mean, we're probably killing people by carrying them out at that height, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, we need, you know, we need to look sensibly here at these jobs and what they really require and not just some idea of what macho is. The men in the fire department say the women aren't strong enough. They've had to change that's true. the test. I mean, if, well, that's if, all right. Institutions have to adjust. If there are still physical problems which prevent certain activities, those activities should be assisted so that it, in a way, with technology, so that it's possible. They should give them an electric axe. Whatever is required. Is that what equal opportunity means? And if it is, is that good policy? And who pays for it? Well, you know the answer to that. You do. Been to Sears lately? If you buy something here, you should know that some of your dollar goes to pay for years of litigation between Sears and the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. The EEOC sued Sears, saying the fact that so many more men than women held big-ticket commission sales jobs selling lawnmowers and appliances, for example, was proof that Sears discriminated. So this is a good machine. It's only 288. Sears said, we didn't discriminate. We ask women to do those jobs. It's just that few women want to sell things like lawnmowers. You're welcome. After the EEOC was unable to produce any women who said they'd been discriminated against, Sears won the suit. The $20 million the litigation cost will be passed on to us customers. Totals one sixty fifty six. Legal fees will also be passed on to you if you or your kids take an SAT test. Boys do better on these tests, especially in math. So lawyers from the ACLU say there have to be changes. The test is biased against girls, and that denies girls their fair share of national merit scholarships. So what should they do to the test? 
It's up to the Office for Civil Rights to decide exactly how the scholarship should be distributed, what the fairest way will be. Not all girls are happy about the suit. Jennifer Horn won a merit scholarship last year. She says they shouldn't change the test. I don't think it would do anything positive for girls. Um, maybe the scores would, would be better, but then boys will be able to turn around and say, well, the reason girls are doing better is because we just changed the test for them. Loria Allred says we need more equality lawsuits. We should have more lawsuits? Yes, more lawsuits, until the day when we enjoy equal rights with men. She and others sued clothing stores that charge men less for alterations. And dry cleaners. Some charge more to clean women's blouses. Women's shirts, 50 cents or more. Frightened dry cleaners quickly changed their policy, though privately they argue they should charge women more, because women's clothes take more time. And women are more demanding, they say. This is consistent with the scientific research that shows women have better proximal senses, like a more acute sense of touch and better close-up vision. Women see the spot. Men don't even know there's a spot. Well, it may be, because I think I can smell sexism more than you can. Oh, yes, and more lawyers smell sexism all the time. If you cut hair and charge women more than men, watch out. Women in the district have been victims of illegal price differentials. These law students recently filed human rights complaints against salons that charge more for women's haircuts. It's a good class project, says their professor, John Banzaff. Now the salons hire a lawyer? The salons could hire lawyers and either together or separately try to fight us in a hearing, but our law in the district is so clear. It says you cannot justify a different price for men and women, even if you can show that it costs you more. Even if it is true that it takes longer to cut women's hair, it's still illegal? Pretty much it's plain and simple. You cannot charge more for the same service. No exceptions? Not, not unless you run out of business. But then the only way to prove it would be to go out of business. That's what the statute says. I guess it's just too bad for the salons. They could fight back, but if your profit's a few dollars per haircut, who can afford thousands of dollars to pay a lawyer? You're such a bully. Why must all salons charge what you say they should charge? Let me turn the question around. Why can't a nightclub charge blacks twice as much as white? But there are real differences between men and women. That there aren't between whites and blacks. Hairstylists say it simply takes longer to do most women's hair. Yeah, it takes longer and it just takes... Women are more hysteria about their hair. It's as simple as that. The answer is our legislature passed the statute. Our agency enforces it. We're simply enforcing the law. It seems everyone's enforcing equality these days. I felt sad, and the teacher said... In East Windsor, New Jersey, the principal of this school wouldn't allow this little boy to pass out birthday invitations in school because he didn't invite the girls. I went in the coat closet, and I was, I was crying a little bit, and then I felt really bad. All these rules protecting women's rights have brought us more so, groups demanding uh, men's you rights. Guys, um, men are definitely being screwed, and we're Many not men were angry about the women's the movement anyway. Don't we deserve to be pushed back a bit? See, that's one of the real problems. Haven't we acted like pigs no, for thousands of so. years? I don't think so. Men have been wimpified and beaten over the head so much, we're afraid to act like our full masculine self. There's irony here. These men's rights advocates are furious that in child custody cases, judges favor the mothers. Fathers get custody only 10% of the time. So here, it's convenient for the men's rights advocates to agree with Gloria Steinem. We're all equal. Aren't women in general better nurturers? No. Next question. Aren't women better mothers, better nurturers? Fathers and mothers are both equal good parents. Evolution shows that women have done most of the mothering that is not that is not that is that is a myth that is a myth but evolution suggests it's not a myth that women may be more intense loving parents they're certainly less likely to abandon the kids it's we men who most often do that so maybe it's right that the judges favor mothers and considering men's strength and spatial skills maybe it's right that most architects and football players are men and because of women's superior verbal and people skills, maybe it's all right that 60% of the pediatricians are women. And most of the real estate agents and teachers are women. Very good. One half. Maybe women are biologically different. Your brains work differently. Maybe you're not as good in math. 
Why sue me because of that? We're all paying for your lawsuits. Women have a right to be angry. They have a right to go to court, to vindicate their rights. They have a right to get elected to public office, to make the public policy so that they will they not be deprived of their rights. And if they don't get elected, you're going to file a suit demanding they be elected? I think we should do each and every act which is necessary and appropriate to protect our rights and the rights of our daughters. Whew. Well, I want to protect my daughter's rights, too. But suing every time things aren't neatly equal, is that the way to go? We're going to coerce people to behave the way the social engineers say we should? Is that what America should be about? Perhaps instead of arguing about our differences, we should honor them, reorder society based on our very different strengths. We'll consider that next. If the science is right about men and women being different in so many ways, then what do we do with that information? Again, I can see why some feminists don't even want the science discussed. Over the years, the difference has been used to hold women back, to say, yeah, women don't belong in business, politics, that's men's work. But why must difference mean anyone should be excluded, their choices limited? Instead, the researchers point out that knowledge about differences can give people more choice. On the other hand, there are so many good social implications. We may alter our educational strategies to be more understanding of the way boys and girls are. Take math, for example. Oh. Okay, which numbers, girls? This high school in Presque Isle, Maine, is one of a number that now runs girls-only math classes. And the girls work in groups because research suggests girls learn better.